I'm gonna break down how I went from this to this. Did it take a lot of time? Yes, 7 days. But was it worth it? I don't know, just look at me. So, it all starts with a simple thought, a teapot house. Why? Now tell me honestly, where would you want to live, here or here? All the people with bad taste like myself will choose this. Like they have chosen to watch this video. I am the wonder why you're trying to this greatest idea of my life and a sleepless night, I move to day one. Now day one is the best. You love your life, you love this idea and you just start us. by feeling hey, this project. Look at us. Look at us. And just like that, I've gathered these references. This is where I asked myself whether I like a tall teapot or a short teapot, a curvy teapot or just a linear teapot. I ultimately decided to have a curvy teapot but a little bit tall. And for the art style, I went with this reference. Soft lighting, soft edges, a highly saturated, a playful looking scenario. Now a normal person, next step would be to start by sketching, maybe get the gist of it, but a special homo sapien like me, I straight away jumped into Blender. In here, the first thing that I start with is block modeling. At this stage, I don't care about any details but just the proportions. Like how big the main body should be. Should it be fat like this or maybe a bit slimmer like this? How big the roof should be? Should it house one window, two window or maybe three? The handle and the nozzle should be like this or should it be reversed? And there after brainstorming a whole day on the design, I had my masterpiece ready. See, this is the ground reality. The idea in your head looks so much better than what you produce at first. Nevertheless, I took this abomination of a design and went to bed and waited for day 2. Now day 2 is hell. The motivation for day 1 was this beautiful idea in your head. But for day 2 is this pure shit. This is where you ask yourself why this idea? Why not that Tony Stark's house on the cliff with big Iron Man at the back? But I must go on. Since I'm a man with fragile ego and I want to be the man my dog thinks I am, I jumped into Blender again. This time at least I wasn't starting from zero. Even though this looks shit but this is all I needed. Unlike day one where I was only focusing on proportions, day two was all about details. First I traced one side of this teapot and roughly adjusted it. Then I applied a screw modifier to get this complete shape out of this thin line. Then I copied this shape, applied all the modifiers and simply extracted the bottom half of this shape. Placed it back and applied a solidify modifier and in the edit mode selected this edge loop and marked them sharp. Next I placed an edge split modifier and placed it on top. Finally I unhid the solidify modifier and added a bevel modifier to get these slits in between. For the rooftop I spawned a cylinder, scaled it, adjusted the top vertices, added a loop cut and beveled it. For the nozzle again, I traced the shape of it, applied a skin modifier, adjusted it and smoothed it out with the subdivision modifier. And for the side handle again, I traced the shape, converted into a curve and in the bevel properties, I gave it some depth and a profile. Next I added a curved circle, placed it in the middle and gave it some depth and profile in the bevel settings. Then I simply copied it and placed it below the roof. For the roof, first I took a cylinder and cut it in half and extracted a mesh line from the roof. Then I used a combination of array and curve modifier to distribute these tiles on the roof. Then I simply duplicated them around the roof. And finally, I made a geometry node setup which randomizes these tiles location and scale. For the windows, I spawned in a cylinder, added a loop cut, scaled and beveled. And did a similar thing with the other two windows. For the roof of these windows, I simply copied the original, scaled and placed it on them. For the main entrance, I took a cube, scaled, select the top two edges and beveled them to make an arch. And then I used this arch to cut through the main object as a boolean. To add some more details, I simply copied the main base, applied all the modifiers and delete all the vertices except the front ones. Then I simply converted it into a curve and added some depth and profile to it. And finally placed it back in front of the door. Did a similar thing with this other window right here. For the windows above, I made a mesh like this and used a shrink wrap modifier to snap them on the base. And next I did my favorite trick, that is to convert them into a curve and add some depth. 
I did the same trick for these other windows too, as well as here. For the main door, I took a plank like this, added it and used the same boolean that I used previously but this time at the intersection to get the main round shape of the door like that. And lastly, I used the bevel to smooth out the edges. And finally, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I had redeemed myself from this to this. And once again, I went to sleep but with some honor. And this is how I saw the light of day 3. Now day 3 was chill. I had left my demons behind and this day was all about casually texturing and working on the overall environment. Starting from the roof, I took a human saturation node, gave it some orange color, plugged it in and also spawned in geometry node from which I plugged random per island into value and used color ramp to smooth out the transition. With the simple node setup, I had each tile popping out differently and then I simply linked the same material to rest of the rooftop. And for the bottom part, since it was to touch the ground grass, I made a mask using gradient and noise texture first. And then I took a noise texture, plugged into a color ramp, added some hues of greens, plugged into a mix node, used masks to separate white and green. For the windows, I took ambient occlusion, plugged it into a color ramp and used this as a mask between blue and light blue color. For the door, I added a noise texture, added color ramp and also increased the X scale to make wooden like slits and give it some color. I also used a combination of wave texture and noise texture to give some more depth to the material. And finally, I left rest of it white because my life, my rules. Now it was time for the overall environment. So I first spawned a camera, changed it from perspective to orthographic, also spawned a plane, placed it below, selected the back edge, extruded it up and beveled. Next I used a cylinder and used it as a boolean to cut through the plane. And then I added a circle for the ground plane. For the water, I added a plane, threw in some loop cuts and also used the displaced modifier with Voronoi texture to have that subtle water effect. For lighting, I used a subtle amount of area light to light from above. A spotlight with high radius for softer shadows, controlled with a black body temperature of 3500 units for warmer ambient. To have some more contrast in the scene, I added a plane and parent this plane to a spotlight. To this plane, I added a noise texture, plugged it into a color ramp and with some minor adjustments, plugged it into the alpha. This way, the light could easily pass through the plane and have some random variations. For the sky at the back, I used a gradient texture, separate XYZ node and hooked into a color ramp with blue and white for a smoother sky fall off. For the ground, I used polygonic add-on to distribute grass on it, having saturated color and randomized scale. To have some more details in the background, I took a curve, edited it and gave it some depth in the curve properties. Followed by a displacement modifier to randomize it. Finally, I gave it the same grass which is on the ground to blend it with the scene. For the water, I simply gave it a blue color with slightly transmission and zero roughness. I made trees by extruding a vertice randomly and using a skin modifier on them. Followed by a subdivision modifier to smooth it out. For the leaves, I first took a sphere, I cut it in half and distributed some points on it using geometry node. Then I instanced a custom shaped leaf followed by randomized scale and rotation. I simply placed its spheres on the branches. And finally added them to the scene. I also took a plane like this, distributed some points on it and instanced a rock like this followed by randomized scale and rotation. At this point, all the main things were done, but the place still looked empty like nobody lives there. So I added these details. Like these bushes on the ground, a fox, a deer, some rabbit, cat, a window on the door, mailbox, and whatever that could live in the space. Finally, after day 4, I had this masterpiece ready. And I was so happy until I realized the next part is animation. 
At this point, I don't even know how I feel. After doing so much, the project is only 50% done. Now I just want to see the end of it. And so on day 5, I jumped into Blender once again. Ah shit! Here you go again! So this is my usual animation style. When all hair breaks loose and all the objects assemble into a scene. This basically is just a free flow of all the curves which takes me hours to make. I also have a course on this for those who want to learn this in detail. So for this animation, I did not wish to be this chaotic. I wanted it to be simple and subtle. So I planned a bit. Like what comes first and how? I decided the main body should come first for which I used a screw modifier. Simultaneously, the ground and the water should also pop up for which I simply scaled down the boolean. The next thing, I made curves to settle down the window cylinders. For roofing, I used geometry nodes, basically the proximity effect where it uses the external object to reveal the tiles like this. Check out this video if you want to learn the details of it. For the cladding at the bottom, another geo nodes effect, but this time it uses the set position node to scale along the normals. Same proximity effect used on the tiles for the stones as well. To reveal the trees, another geo nodes effect where it uses the external object to scale along the normals. For the leaves, I basically played with the rotation and scale. To reveal the nozzle was the most problematic part. I wanted it to follow its geometry naturally and be revealed like this. But those experienced would know it was not possible in any way. So I first UV unwrapped it properly and used this as a gradient mask between transparent and principal BSDL. Now without lying, tell me this is the smartest trick you have seen. I used the same trick to reveal the handle. For the grass, I simply scaled it up as well as the animals and other details. And at the end of day 6, I had this animation ready. And now comes the final day 7. Even Jesus rested on the 7th day and I am just a homo sapien. So I just put this animation on render and rested. It took 6 hours to render these 7 seconds. But the end result was I think worth it. So this is what it takes to create a 7 second 3D animation. It's a roller coaster ride of emotions. I hope you found this video informative. Until next time.